sorry. Yes. 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 Kenjian, let me start by thanking Kenjian for receiving us here today at uh, Kiambere. Uh, we have come down from the Cascade uh, up from Masinga to basically uh, where we have all Kamburu, sorry, where we have all seen the the investment in generation that supports this country in the hydro. Um, as we are all aware, for the last five years, we have had serious uh, failure in the rains, and um, you will appreciate when you see the, the water levels that we have a challenge. So we're here today to basically appreciate the management of the hydrology and what we have to do to basically make sure that the water levels are able to support us through uh, the period before we get our long rains. Um, to a very good extent, I think Kenjian is doing a good job in managing the hydrology to ensure that uh, we don't dispatch when other generation uh, systems are available so that we can preserve water for the longest uh, time before we get the, the, the long rains. So we want to thank you, Kenjian, for the good job you are doing. But uh, the truth of the matter, like you have all seen, is that the water levels are very low. We have to basically think about um, the security, energy security for this country. Um, the, those guys who came before us, if you think about the planning that went into this in the 70s, in the 60s, 70s, to deliver the uh, generation in the 80s, 
was a really good planning. So even as we sit here today and are concerned about tomorrow, we really need to plan for the 2030s, 2040, and 2050. With the climate change, you basically realize that until we, unless we work on the uh, reforestation of our catchments, unless we work on the weather, weather, what do you call it, uh, climate change issues, so that we can go back to the old days when we used to have good hydrology, um, generation by hydro uh, may not really present a future for us. But certainly you are aware of the 15 billion uh, program, which is personally run by the president to ensure that we grow some 15 billion trees in 10 years is a, a good initiative that will preserve these investments for the years to come. Uh, it is also worth noting, noting that um, Kenya, I've just come back from Energy Week in India, and uh, Kenya is referenced as one of the leading countries in terms of use of um, renewable energy. And so it appalls upon us as leaders in this country to ensure that we sustain our hydros uh, through the various programs that uh, will support climate change, um, continue to work on reducing the generation by biofuel, fuels, which is part of the climate change problem. Part of the hydrology challenge we are seeing here is because of what we have done on the fossil fuel in the years past. So I want us to appreciate that uh, even as we face this challenge, we are here to pay attention to ensure that we are able to sustain our economy despite the hydrology. Uh, the challenge is not only uh, in power generation, we do appreciate the food security currently facing our country because of the same challenge of the failure of rains in the last five years. So even as we sit here, you must all be aware that Kenya is fairly diverse. As we speak today, we dispatch 800 megawatts from hydro, uh, combining this cascade down to Sondo Miriu and uh, Chakwel. Um, but significantly, we have divested and we are doing significantly well in geothermal today. So when we face this kind of challenge, unlike other countries like down south, Zambia, Malawi, and even South Africa, we are able to really fall back to geothermal at times like this to support the economy uh, and the power requirements for this, for this country. So I want to, again, uh, thank, let's manage the hydrology. Let us dispatch the hydro when we must and continue to ramp up the, uh, what do you call, uh, geology, the geothermal rather, the solar, which is, is basically come up fairly well lately with Garissa, Selenge, and Sadet in, in, uh, in, the, in the North Rift. Let us push um, the wind generation. We've got good winds in uh, Liangalani, which is supporting us quite a bit. But lately, because of the power trade and the interconnection with Ethiopia, areas where we've done significant investment. We're just going to be commissioning shortly the East Africa, the Eastern Power link to Ethiopia, which is currently dispatching up to 200 megawatts from Ethiopia. And that way, at times like this, we are able to draw up to 200 megawatts from Ethiopia. And uh, in other times, if they have hydrology problems, we should also be able to feed them uh, with our power from Kenya. We're working to finalize the power pool to Tanzania and to Uganda so that the challenges of the least cost power development where the concern of if you develop too much power, who pays for it? We should be able to sell it across the boundaries of this country and therefore mitigate the challenges that is currently facing the country or facing the other countries down south like Zambia, Malawi and South Africa. Time in the field looking at what's happening down in the North Rift um, even as the dumps are low here, Takwell is slightly much, much higher today as we speak. But that's a different challenge because we've got some constraints in the transmission lines. But uh, it is a blessing in disguise that whereas we are very low here, Takwell is slightly much higher because uh, we had um, a constrained uh, transmission line between Itale, Otum and Takwell, which we are fixing now. And we should be able to ramp up the generation from, from Takwell. Uh, hydro. Uh, I want to thank you for coming to witness this with us. You do realize that this country has made significant investment and it is upon us to manage those investments, but more importantly, work and plan for the future. Uh, thank you very much.
basically the water levels are it is energy storage water water is a form of potential energy it sits there and when you push it down uh, downstream uh, those 20 30 40 meters it runs the turbines so when you don't have enough water what basically that means is we'll not be able to generate what we might be doing in a short while might be if it gets worse we'll be closing masinga which is a 40 megawatt generation but masinga is used as a reservoir to hold water for the downstream generation so if we have to close masinga i guess what the engineers will do is to remove all push all the water down to the cascades to support the generation downstream we hope we don't have to get there because today is uh, february 10th if by march 10th we have some rains maybe 15th we'll be looking very keenly to receive the african uh, weather outlook in the next uh, 15 days and we do expect that uh, we should be getting some rains but like i said um was it felix um we are fairly diverse unlike unlike countries like uh, our neighbor uganda which is almost 100 percent hydro uh, zambia which is significantly hydro kenya is 30 percent hydro about 35 percent geothermal is significant so and geothermal we are not having any challenges we so what we're basically doing is pushing the other form of generation and that might include pushing more of the diesel generation which is a bit expensive and using the little hydro that we have to meet the requirements for the country so we have a battery of engineers here they're helping us to manage that and uh hopefully uh god willing and with the weather outlook that we are receiving sometimes in the next 10 days we expect that we should be able to go through this period the only challenge is we might get power being slightly expensive because we are ramping the diesel generation more than we ordinary should be doing diesel is normally used for peaking uh, during the peak times between uh six o'clock in the evening and ten when our homes light up and industries are running we need maximum power we can we currently having a peak of about 2140 and um with uh some uh 15 percent uh, headroom we are being forced to run the diesel more than would ordinarily run the diesel and you know diesel dispatch at more than 20 cents US, eh? uh hydro dispatches at four cents so we are we are going to, we are getting power when we run diesels at five times the price that hydro would ordinarily generate but we do hope to be able to sustain the economy and support the systems that need power in this country over the short spell before we get the next rains um it, it will be like i said we are managing the the, the dispatch and uh, we are managing the hydrology to the, a very good extent we dispatch power on what we call um least cost uh, merit order order list cost merit order of dispatch the merit order of dispatch says dispatch the cheap one first and if the economy requires more power dispatch the in that order until you dispatch the most expensive so ordinarily we should be dispatching uh diesel generation only between 6 p.m in the evening and 10 p.m when we sleep then the industry again is able to be sustained by the the low cost power um to the extent that industry must run we then must support the industry using all the generations that we have so whereas diesel should be running at an optimum of five percent for picking five percent max we are now at the moment running at about 15 percent so there'll be an additional 10 percent on diesel and if you do some simulation uh to the extent that we are going to be ramping that much more uh, yes the power price will go up but not significantly per se um diesel currently generates about 600 megawatts we basically saying we'll possibly run it up to 20 percent maybe max of 25 percent uh to support this hydrology that we have all seen today to the power purchase agreements one you know that uh, in 2018 we had a moratorium in regard to the the ppas so we can we and probably that is part of the challenge that you're having in terms of uh, uh, power right now but at the opportune time is something that we are reviewing the negotiations are still ongoing 
uh, in terms of the PPAs. We have not yet got to the conclusive uh, end, but what we anticipate is that, uh, uh, <clears throat> for example, wind and solar, the prices that were affected during the PPAs at around 12 US cents uh, for solar, for, for wind and solar as well, we expect that uh, once the moratorium is lifted and we, we get uh, new PPAs on the grid, the, that price will not be there and will get much lower price to reflect the times of the day. And so therefore, uh, once the, con the negotiations are done and uh, the proclamation is done by none other than, than the president, then you expect uh, some changes, which we shall not pronounce today, and they shall be pronounced at the opportune time when all the negotiations are done. The last one month, once when we opened up the lines from uh, Susua, Isinya to Nairobi South, that is uh, the river and Mbakasi, we were able to evacuate much more power from Geothermal, and currently we are getting about 44% of our power matrix from Geothermal. Sometimes we are able to push up to 48%, and so, therefore, uh, uh, that has helped us in terms of uh, managing uh, the thermal dispatches. And so, therefore, even with the low hydrology, we are not expecting that your bills will be uh, will be that affected. So, uh, the situation is not that bad. With with Ethiopia coming in 180 megawatts, 200 me uh, megawatts, and ramping up of geothermal, the two are helping us in managing the situation as it is. So. Uh, don't expect that much uh, change in your power bills. It, we, are, we are managing the situation. Yes. You said earlier that uh, the power purchase agreements we are building today are not for dispatch of power in 2024-25. It is for the period 25, 26, 27. So, but it's important to plan for the future. Uh, even as we do what we do as leaders in this country, I think uh, going forward we've learned some lessons that we should carry along our engineers to advise us appropriately so that uh, we make decisions like you've seen the kind of investment here. They don't just require a policy pronouncement. They require real consensus building and uh, appreciating the knowledge that has been built uh, in this kind of investments. So even as we go forward, um, today we are dispatching about 13-14% on hydro. So if the worst comes to the worst, we're just going to lose 13 percent, and we think, but we think we can pick up that from from the other generation matrices. But I don't think we are going to get there. Um, understanding the science that went into this, how the cascades have been built uh, to support each other, are going downstream.